Hello everyone, this is Paul Alster here with you at Sportsbet TV. It's great to have you along if this is the first time you're joining us and wonderful to have you back if you're uh, back for more and I know that so many of you are after the amazing events of uh, Tuesday which was uh, one of the uh, highlights of my uh, career as a tipster in uh, racing with the uh, remarkable success of uh, Jeff Kidder at uh, 80 to 1. I'll come to that in just a minute, but before I forget, if you haven't already subscribed, do so by pressing the button just uh, below this screen and the bell icon so that you'll be kept in touch with all the bulletins. And uh, the more the merrier, uh, it ensures that uh, I'm able to stay with you as long as possible, providing these uh, free selections. And remember to share the video as well with friends and family or anybody that wants to back a winner at a decent price because I'm all about backing horses at uh, decent each way odds and um, as happened on Tuesday and maybe by the time you see this recording Wednesday afternoon evening or Thursday morning maybe the Wednesday runners might have gone okay too. Well let's take you back to Tuesday because it was a terrific day. I gave you four horses and the first three all ran well at each way prices. Valley Adam uh, recovered from a dreadful mistake to finish second in the Supreme Novices Hurdle. I Wright blundered badly at the first. I thought it was all over in the Ultima, but he stayed on well for a place. And Sharjah ran a cracker, recommended at 16 to 1 each way in the Champion Hurdle, but he found Honeysuckle um, just far too good. She was wonderful, and it was wonderful for racing to see Rachel Blackmore uh, show what a, a fantastic jockey she is. She could very easily win the Irish uh, Jockeys Championship this year. And then of course we came to the Boodles Handicap Hurdle. Now when I tipped Jeff Kidder to you uh, for Tuesday, I said that the 33 to 1 that was on offer to me seemed overpriced because, and I went through the reasoning, um, simply he was well in at the weights with one or two other horses that were running in the contest. Uh, so it was with some dismay that I saw his price continuing to drift and drift. Clearly nobody agreed or very few of the uh, betting firms agreed and the odds maker and he uh, continued to drift and drift uh, all the way out to 80 to 1. Um, and as I always say to everybody, try and bet with a bookmaker that will guarantee you the SP if it's bigger than the odds you take. So in my case, I took 33 to 1, but I was you get paid out at 80 to 1, just marvellous. And 16 to 1, of course, just for the place. Now, it was one of those great moments, and I know so many of you have left messages, and I'm really, really grateful for your support. And uh, it's been really humbling um, terrific from all over the world. I know a lot of you in Australia were on, uh, people in the Caribbean and in Hong Kong and uh, Malta and all over the world, the Seychelles, you name it, all sorts of remarkable places. Um, and it's just great to know that so many of you managed to make a bob or two, but whatever um, happens, don't give it all back. Uh, play it sensible because these things don't happen every day. Although to be fair, on this service, we have had a remarkable run of success, and I'll come to that shortly. But watching the race uh, on Tuesday, probably like me, you're watching, you see Jeff Kidder running well in midfield, and you probably think to yourself like me, just keep going, son. Uh, try and get into one of those first six places and were quids in. And then as they swung the turn and raced down towards the last, Sean Flanagan, who rode a terrific race, uh, switched the horse inside and I could see he was going so well and I'm there almost riding riding a finish to get him over the last and he put in a beautiful jump jumped through the center of the horses that were uh, challenging and he came home up that stiff hill in tremendous fashion and there was no fluke about it he uh, really did win in terrific fashion and at 80 to 1 well uh, you don't have to have much on at all uh, to be able to be uh, running around the living room and uh, kissing the nearest person to you as long as they're uh, COVID free, of course. So it was uh, a great moment. And um, let's hope that we have one or two other winners along the way, or at least some good price uh, placed horses. And uh, I know some of you in Australia uh, were on at 120 and 140 to one on the exchanges. So well done indeed. And I hope you get uh, a few beers in for that. Uh, and as I say, thank you for all the great messages. It's nice to be uh, supported. And um, 
in the words of Frank Sinatra, the famous words, um, it's nice to be wanted, even if it's only by the police. Anyway, we'll move on to um, the Thursday selections. Um, but before I do, I just want to point out to those that are new to the service that um, I've been tipping each way big prices since October when we decided to concentrate on each way betting. And here are just a few of the winners that we've had along the way. And I don't tip every day. I normally only tip uh, for three or four horses on a weekend. So the strike rate has been remarkable. And these are just the winners, not the placed horses that have shown profits. Obviously, Jeff Kidder yesterday at 80 to 1. On Saturday, we just had one runner. Mum's tipple recommended 5 to 1 that one. In February, it was a fairly thin month, with the exception of A Wave of the Sea, who won at 16 to 1. And that basically saw us show a profit on the month. In January, we had Brewing Up a Storm at 6 to 1 and See You at Midnight recommended at 20s. In December, Make Good at 12 to 1. In November, we hit the big time. I didn't think I'd be able to top this one. York Hill won at 66 to 1 and Barnaby Dawn won recommended at 12s. And in October, we had Frodon in at 5 to 1 and a Dave won at 10 to 1. And that's as well as all the each way placed horses. So it really has been a remarkable run of success. And we'll be showing those in due course on the proofing so you can see exactly what I've tipped and when. Okay, on we go now to Thursday then where it seems that the weather is going to keep uh, fair and the ground is going to continue to dry out and be no worse than good to soft. And bearing that in mind, the horses I've selected should go uh, on the ground. I've got no bet in the open of the 120 because I think the favourite Envoy Allen is going to be incredibly hard to beat in the Marsh Novices chase. And I don't really fancy any of the other bigger price runners enough to uh, suggest you get involved. Now, my first um, recommendation is in the 155, the Potemps Network final handicap hurdle. Uh, going to be about 24 runners, and Imperial Alcazar, well, he looks a solid 5-1 to one favourite, but I just think that the ground might be just a little bit quick for him, and he might find a few too good. Um, Denise Foster's The Boss's Oscar, I think, has been laid out for this, and I'm sure he's going to run well after two good second places over in Ireland. And there are loads of horses that have been plotted for this race. It's a race where trainers target horses each and every year. So I'm putting up two horses because I do like in big handicaps often to have two chances. Now, the first of them is a horse called Come On Teddy, trained by Tom George and the mount of Jonathan Burke. Now, he's eight pounds better off for five lengths with Imperial Alcazar uh, for their running at Warwick, where he finished third. And this is a horse who won at the Cheltenham December meeting and he looks fairly weighted. He goes well on the track and I think the ground will be OK for him. And at the time of this recording, and this is subject to a lot of change because we're recording these bulletins very early, uh, he's 10 to 1 each way uh, for six places with many firms, although William Hill will give you 11 to 1 for five places. But remember, bet with a firm that's going to give you the SP if it's bigger because he could easily drift, as we saw with Jeff Kidder. Now, the other um, suggestion in the Potemps Network final at 155 Thursday is Storm Arising, trained by Paul Nichols and the Mount of Briony Frost. This is another horse who I think is progressive. He won a two mile seven furlong contest in November off 131 uh, and then uh, was beaten half a length at Sandown before winning at Chepstow. He's been in good form, stays on really well at the end of his races. And he's only gone up four pounds uh, in the weight since he last ran. And um, ask Dylan, who reopposes, um, uh, he beat that one last time out. I don't think he's going to be able to turn the tables. Now, Storm Arising, uh, 20 to 1 each way for six places. Uh, but William Hill, at the time of this recording, are offering 22 to 1 uh, for five places. So those are my two against the field in the Potemps. Come on, Teddy and uh, Storm Arising. And then we go on to what I think for many people is going to be the race of the week because it's an absolute corker this year. The 2.30 is the Grade 1 Ryanair Chase, Grade 1, over the extended two and a half miles. Um, fabulous race, betting five to one the field. And uh, Alaho and Min 
uh, Min, who won it last year, of course, and Alaho, who was collared by Champ in the last couple of strides last year in the RSA, both very interesting. Now, I watched an interview yesterday on Racing TV with Willie Mullins, and uh, Lydia Hislop asked him about his runners on Thursday and about Alaho if he thought it would go well. And Willie, who's the most modest, understated kind of a, a guy, just looked at her and said, GSI. And she looked back at him blankly and he had to explain, get stuck in. Well, Willie Mullins doesn't say those type of things normally. So clearly they are very sweet on Alaho. I think he'll run well. I think Mellon is a big danger at the trip, Mr. Fisher as well, and Imperial Aura. But despite what Willie Mullins said, I'm going to go against him because the horse I like here is St. Calvados. Uh, Harry Whittington trains him and Gavin Sheehan is on board and he was beaten just a neck in this race last year. And I would say probably an unlucky neck because he had to switch. Uh, that was in the race uh, won by Min. Now, he usually goes very well at this track. He was fourth as well to Frodon in the King George over three miles, weakening, only approaching the last and losing two places on the run-in. This drop back in trip is ideal for him. Uh, he unseated early in the Cotswold chase, won by Native Rivers, so that's uh, a by the by. But two and a half miles is his trip. Um, I don't think he'd want the ground to dry out too much, so I'm hoping it's going to be at least good to soft. But otherwise, he has so much going for him. And at the time of recording, he's 11 to 1 each way. And most firms go four places. Although credit to Betfair Sportsbook, they go five places. St. Calvados each way in the 2.30, the Ryanair chase. Um, then we're going to move on to the 3.05 race. The Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle is always a cracking race. Um, Paisley Park won it two years ago. And he's back. Um, he beat Time Hill, who misses the race, unfortunately. He beat him last time. Uh, Sire de Burley, twice a winner of the Potemps over the three miles, uh, was a really good third to Flooring Porter in Ireland in a grade one last time. And Flooring Porter goes again. And then you've got the enigma that is the storyteller, who inevitably runs big races, whether it's fences or hurdles. But regular followers will know that in my anti-post selections uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I suggested backing Lisnagar Oscar before he ran at Haydock. Um, and that was 33 to 1. And I know quite a few of you are on Lisnagar Oscar at 33 to 1 for Rebecca Curtis and Harry Skelton. He won the race last year, had a bit of a dip in form. Then he had the wind surgery prior to his comeback run at Haydock, where he ran an absolute blinder to be second. And I think he has so much going for him. And even at the 10 to 1 each way for four places, 11 to 1 with William Hill for three places at the time of this recording, I can see him running a massive race. And I'll be surprised if he doesn't finish in the first three. And if you run at the 33s, then obviously we could be quids in if he just makes the frame. So Rebecca Curtis has made all the right noises about Liz Nagar Oscar, saying he's back to where he was when he won the race 12 months ago. And this is a race where there have been over the years um, many multiple winners and um, Barracuda, uh, a very obvious example. Um, but Lisnagar Oscar is the one that I recommend. And then just the one more race uh, on Thursday, and that is the last race of the day. I've missed out the two in between. There was nothing in there that I really could get too excited about. But I'll take you to the 450 race at Cheltenham Thursday. The Folk Warwing Kim Muir handicap chase, three and a quarter miles, 21 runners, wide open handicap chase, usually for amateur riders, of course. It's like the uh, amateur riders' uh, gold cup in many ways. Um, and uh, because of the COVID, the amateurs aren't allowed to take part, which is a shame for them. But it means all the jockeys uh, that are taking part are the real uh, high-class professionals. Uh, Shantu Flyer is a horse I've uh, uh, been keeping an eye on since he came back. He was uh, the twice placed in the Fox Hunters in the last two years. I can see him running a big race. And there's also the likes of Kill Film Cross, Plan of Attack, Bob Marler, and Disha Abu, who was second, third, fourth, and fifth in this race 12 months ago. They've all obviously been prepared to have another crack at this. 
uh, but I fancy an outsider uh, to give them all a raise. And I'm sure a lot of you there are thinking, aye, aye, he's, uh, he's got another outsider uh, to have a look at. And the one I'm suggesting you consider here is a horse called Go Another One. He's trained in Ireland by John McConnell and is the man of a young man called Simon Torrens, who claims three pounds. He's been making such a name for himself in Ireland this season. And uh, many of you may know, I broadcast regularly on Irish racing on internet radio. I follow it very closely and mark my words, Simon Torrens is a potential uh, future star of the uh, national hunt sphere. Now, the thing about go another one is that he has to have decent ground to show his best form. So the drying ground is perfect for him. Any rain would be a negative for him. Now this is a horse who for a handicapper has an, a marvelous strike rate. He's won 11 of his 28 races. He hasn't been seen since finishing third to the boss's Oscar at Thurless in October over hurdles. Um, his last chase was when he was fourth of 14 in the Mayo National uh, Ballon Robe in September. He actually fell in this race last year um, at the ninth fence. That was on soft ground. He probably wasn't going as well as you would have liked, uh, but he'll be a different proposition this time around. And he runs off the same mark of 142 before the three pound claim of the excellent Simon Torrens. Now, another thing about Go Another One is his record in recent years after a break when he goes fresh uh, he's won four times from his last five races where he comes back from a break. So he really is a horse who doesn't need a prep race. He's up and at and ready to go uh, first time after having uh, had a bit of a time off. The other considerable fact here is that trainer John McConnell uh, has a terrific record in the UK with a remarkable 37% winning strike rate. And that includes a record of four from 18 at Cheltenham, no less, one of which was a big uh, selection of ours in December, Make Good, who won for us in terrific fashion at 12 to one. So um, Make Good, by the way, was ridden by Richard Johnson that day, who often rides John McConnell's runners, but uh, Richard is claimed to ride for his uh, retainer with Philip Hobbs on Disha Abu. I'm very happy that Simon Torrens is coming over for only his second ride in Britain, I believe. So to the odds on offer and at the time of this recording as of Wednesday late morning, uh, Go Another One is offered by all the firms I've looked at at 33 to 1 each way. I'm sure he's going to go bigger. I'm sure those of you that shop around will have 40 to 1, maybe 50s. And who knows on the exchanges, he could be bigger still. Uh, so five places are on offer at 33 to one, um, with the exception of Skybet, uh, who goes six places uh, at 33 to one. So if you have an account with them, then uh, you get that extra place that could make all the difference. So those are the four races uh, for Thursday. Uh, I hope they're all gonna run well. It would be ridiculous to imagine that uh, by the time they uh, run on Thursday, Wednesday's runners would have uh, uh, gone anywhere close to what we achieved on Tuesday, but I hope they've given you a shout as well, and that on Thursday, uh, we're able to get another run for our money, and whatever happens this Cheltenham Festival, you are quids in after having that uh, great winner on day one. Now, I'll be back with the final Cheltenham Festival bulletin uh, on Thursday. So do look out for that. And a quick heads up, I'm not going to be tipping uh, this weekend. There'll be no Friday bulletin for Saturday because after these four days, uh, I'll be probably lying down in a, a darkened room to recover from all the excitement. But let's keep fingers crossed uh, for the runners Wednesday, Thursday, and of course Friday. And I look forward to you joining me back here at Sportsbet for the final day four Gold Cup selections. Uh, on Thursday evening. So from me, Paul Alster, enjoy your racing. Good luck. Let's hope they all come back safely and bye-bye for now.